You might have guessed it. Today is National Protein Day. So we're going to take the day to recognize some of our really familiar proteins that you might be familiar with, like your muscles. By the way, take a moment to thank your biceps today. So we're going to recognize those more familiar to us and also tip our hats to those less familiar proteins that work really hard every day to carry out our bodily functions. So, happy National Protein Day. Let's go ahead and get started talking about proteins. We've already covered carbohydrates and lipids, so let's go ahead and get started on the proteins, those powerhouses that make up a lot of our body structure and carry out a lot of our body functions. So, proteins. You should have already taken your notes on these, so well, let me go ahead and explain those notes to you a little bit more in depth. So, you guys are familiar with this one. So, proteins are compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And notice, this is the first time that nitrogen shows up. So, with carbs and lipids, we're just getting carbo carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, we've got nitrogen showing up, which is kind of a big deal. Nitrogen is actually all around us. It's actually one of the biggest components in the air that we breathe but our bodies can't take it out of the air so the only way that we get nitrogen is by ingesting it and we can't ingest nitrogen unless we get it from other living things so proteins just remember they've got that carbon hydrogen and oxygen that carbohydrates and lipids had and they also provide us with nitrogen so this is the first time that nitrogen shows up in our food so our bodies contain nitrogen because our bodies contain proteins. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about these compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And just a reminder, to, rem to remember those, I always think cho-cho-chon-chomp. So cho-cho, carbohydrates and lipids. Chon, now we're to proteins. Chomp, when we get to nucleic acids, those contain nitrogen and phosphorus. So, proteins, uh, they have a lot of functions. So, with carbohydrates and lipids, the, the functions are a little bit more straightforward. Proteins, there are so many different types of proteins. Proteins have a lot of different functions in our bodies that are very different. So they actually control reactions. And when we talk about enzymes at probably the end of this week or the beginning of next week, since we don't have school on Friday, um, we're gonna talk about enzymes. And these are these little things in your body that control all the reactions. So all the reactions that go on in your body that are necessary for, for life to take place and for you to keep breathing and for you to keep digesting things, a lot of those reactions take place because enzymes are running them. So enzymes are a type of protein that is really important to our everyday functioning. So they control functions. That's one thing that, one of the things that they do. They form muscle and bone. This is probably the most familiar one to you, but if you look at the structure of your body, most of your body is made out of proteins. So your muscle, your bone structure, a lot of the um, a lot of parts of your components of your skin are made out of protein. So most of what makes you you and the size that you are is protein. It's basically most of the structure of your body is protein. So huge parts of your muscle and bone structure are just made up of protein. So they control reactions, they form the structure of your body, mainly muscle and bone. They also transport substances. There's a molecule called hemoglobin, and that's actually a type of protein. You might know what hemoglobin does. It's actually found on red blood cells. And if you know what red blood cells do, they actually bring oxygen. And it's actually, the hemoglobin is the molecule on the red blood cell that actually picks up oxygen and takes it to all the cells in your body. So. Hemoglobin is really important. So they transport substances. That's just one example of a protein that transports substances. Um, so can, they control reaction. They make up the structure of your body. They transport substances. They also fight off disease. So whenever you get something foreign or something that your body is like, hey, that's a foreign invader. I don't necessarily like that. There are these things called antibodies that attack, 
attack them, attach to them, attack them, and get rid of it, whatever it is, foreign invaders. So they fight off disease, so they're powerhouses. They make up your muscle and bones, they control your reactions, they transport stuff, and they fight off horrible things that get in your body. So, pretty powerful things. Um, they fight off disease, and then last but not least, they're in charge of growth and repair. So the, the main molecule that's going to make Josephina go from a baby that's this big to a toddler to a, a teenager that's like the size of you guys, the reason that you're not still this big is basically because you gained more protein mass. Okay? You gained more muscle mass, you gained more um, bone structure, and basically that's almost entirely protein. So protein is in charge of reactions, it's in charge of forming a lot of your body structure, it's in charge of transporting substances, fighting off disease, and growth and repair. So a lot of stuff in your body going on um, that's run by protein. So they're really important, they're really powerful uh, large molecules in your body. So those are the basic functions of protein. So lot of variety there so make sure that you're looking over those functions pretty often because it's a lot more functions than carbohydrates and lipids so the monomers of proteins are called amino acids so these are the monomers so the little things the little units the little repeating units that make up proteins are amino acids so this is basically what an amino acid looks like it looks pretty complicated, but let me explain what's going on here. Okay, so for every amino acid, they have this basic structure. So over here, there's an amino group. So this stuff in red over here, that's called an amino group. That's where they get their name, amino acids. Um, and over here, there's a carboxyl group over here in blue. And then they have this structure in the whole, that holds everything together in the middle. And then off to the bottom, off to the side here, right down here, is called the R group or a side chain. So every amino acid is going to have this basic structure up here, so this is going to be identical. And then down here, they're going to have this in little structure, this little piece that makes them an individual amino acid. So there are over 20 different types of amino acids that exist and each one of them has this top structure that's exactly the same as every other amino acid and then this bottom structure right here whatever's sitting right here is the thing that makes them different from every other type of amino, of amino acid so i gave you some examples over here so notice that this top part in every one of these amino acids exactly the same and then this bottom part right here this r group or this side chain looks different and that's the thing that makes them look different so out of the 20 amino acids that exist every single amino acid is going to have this top part that's exactly the same and then they're going to have their own individual little r group or side chain to make them look a little bit different um, and we're not going to go into too many details but when we talk about how proteins are formed we're going to get into the different types of amino acids and you guys will hear all sorts of crazy names that they um, that they'd have so um, these this is the basic structure of amino acids so you need to be able to recognize what an amino acid looks like the amino group the carboxyl group and that R group or the side chain down here that gives it its individuality okay so that's what an amino acid looks like so these are the monomers so a ton of these monomers a ton of these amino acids hook together to give us a, um, a protein. So they hook together, give us a protein, um, and some of the different types that, we, um, that you guys wrote down were insulin. If you look at that word insulin, it ends in an I-N. A lot of words that end in I-N are related to proteins. So just like we had that O-S-E ending that... Um, lets us know that it deals with carbohydrates. If you see something that ends in IN, a lot of times it has to do with protein. So keep your eyes um, peeled for that little indicator that could help you on a test or a quiz or help remind you uh, or help in your reading. If you read something that has an IN or an OSE, you'll know, hey, the IN 
probably has to do with protein, the OSE probably has to do with the carbohydrate. So keep that in mind as you're reading. So insulin, you guys have probably heard of that. That is a that is a polymer, it's a protein. That's so that's one of the examples. Enzymes, we already talked about those. They control reactions, and we're gonna talk about those in depth next week. Um, hemoglobin, I just um, mentioned that a little bit earlier. Hemoglobin is actually the protein on red blood cells that transports oxygen. And antibodies are those little little guys that attack foreign invaders. They fight off disease. And of course, you guys are really familiar with um, a lot of muscle protein the structure in your body. So those are examples of polymers. And I wanted to go over really quickly some other vocab words that you guys might end up seeing. So let me get a sheet of paper here. Um, you may have seen, or you may see in your reading when you go this week, that there is a word called peptide. So you might see this word, peptide. And you also might see a word called polypeptide. So peptide actually refers to digestion, but what it, what it's actually referring to is that proteins. So peptide, you might see the word bond behind it. So a peptide bond is basically a bond that forms between amino acids to make a protein. So this is like a protein bond. A protein bond. So if we were to hook together if we were to hook together all these little amino acids right here and put them in a chain, the bonds that would form between them is called are called a peptide bond. You also might see something called a polypeptide, and you guys are already familiar with this prefix poly, so you know that a polypeptide is many peptide. So a polypeptide is basically just a protein. So it's going to be a long chain. So a polypeptide chain is going to be a long chain of amino acids. So a polypeptide chain, again, is a long form of long chain of amino acids. This right here would be that peptide bond. The thing about proteins is they're really complex, complicated molecules. Very, very, very complicated. So when once you have a polypeptide, it's not quite ready to be a protein yet. For proteins, shape is really, really important. So what ends up happening is this is the basic ingredient for, for proteins to be made. And then these polypeptide chains twist and, and wrap around each other and squirm into these really amazing um, structures. And they also sometimes get uh, join with other polypeptide chains to form even like mega mass protein structures so that they can carry out their functions. So. Just wanted to let you guys know if you read about those vocab words, wanted to give you a heads up on those in case you see those and go, what the heck is that? Um, so that's peptide bond and polypeptide chain. So those peptide chains are basically the, the base ingredient to proteins and then they wrap and form these amazing structures um, and that actually look like proteins and help them carry out their functions. So proteins made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Now we get nitrogen in the mix. Um, they control reactions. They form a lot of our body structure. They transport substances, fight disease, and also they're in charge of growth and repair. So those are the functions. The monomers are amino acids. Let this sink into your visual memory. That's what amino acid looks like. Um, and the polymers, insulin, enzyme, hemoglobin, antibodies, and muscle structure. Um, and don't forget those vocab words, peptide bond and polypeptide chain. So go ahead and enjoy rest the rest of your national protein day. I hope you guys have a good day and maybe tonight eat some steak and be thankful for proteins. All right, see you guys later.